I'll ask the Governor for ECP to ask his question. Uh, thank you, Mr. Acting Speaker. My question without notice is uh, again directed to the hardworking Minister for State Enterprises. And Mr. Speaker, this is in relation to the constant blackouts and the issues affecting PPL. To preface my, my question, uh, over the last uh, couple of months, we have been experiencing serious blackouts all across the country. And whilst we have been experiencing blackouts for the last 15 years or so, it's actually gotten worse in recent times. And I think Papua New Guineans everywhere, including in my province of East Sipik, have been complaining quite loudly, and it's only fair that these questions be put to the minister on the floor so that he can explain to the people of Papua New Guinea what the issues are and how quickly they can be fixed. Now, my understanding from ECP is that our current generators have been hired from someone, perhaps 15 years ago. And so PPL is paying for the hire of these machines to supply power to ECP. I understand also that in other parts of the country, there are private power suppliers. And these private power suppliers sell power to PNG Power at a rate of around 33 toya per kilowatt. PNG Power then on sells the power for domestic users at around 60 to 70 toya per kilowatt and to commercial users at 90 toya a kilowatt. So it enjoys a healthy gross margin from what it's supposed to pay and from what it's on selling. Now, my own recent investigations, and I could be wrong and stand corrected in the House, is that PNG Power currently owes all its suppliers approximately 600 to 800 million kina in debts, which it is unable to pay. One of those suppliers is currently in court seeking restitution from PNG Power. Now, I want to also go on the record and appreciate the work of the Minister for State Enterprises in the last few weeks, where he directed Kumul Holdings, which is the owner of PPL, to pay for the fuel to keep our provinces running, uh, even though they are still rationing power, Mr. Speaker. Now, the Minister stated just recently in answer to another question that this company is owned by the people of Papua New Guinea. Being that as it is, could I ask the Minister to finish a financial report to this House so that all members and in fact the people of Papua New Guinea can appreciate the financial position of PPL? That's my first question. My second question, and I, I understand that Kumul Holdings is trying to build up the balance sheet of PPL so that it can sell it at some point at a profit. Now, I want to know how long that process is going to take. If PPL currently owes 800 million or so to its suppliers, how long will it take for it to trade out of that difficulty, one? How long will it take for it to build up the value, two? And therefore, we should be able to sell it at a profit. I would like a commitment on this floor this morning from the good minister to tell the people of Papua New Guinea how long will it take? Give us a time frame. Is it going to be six months, one year, five years? How long will it take before the people of Papua New Guinea can expect the reliable power supplies that they pay for? I also understand that 30% of power produced by PPL is actually stolen by certain individuals. What is PPL doing to recover this power that is being stolen? Finally, what kind of contracts is PPL doing with whoever it is that is currently draining the life out of this company? Could the minister provide to this house 
a list of all of the contracts in the interest of transparency and accountability so that we can know and the people of Papua New Guinea can know. We all want to understand what is affecting PNG power, what can be done to fix it, and how soon can they be fixed. Thank you, Mr. Acting. The Honorable Minister of State Enterprise. Thank you, uh, Mr. Acting Speaker. I'd like to thank uh, the good governor of East, East Pacific Province for asking these very, very important questions. Uh, Mr. Acting Speaker, of course, everyone has been complaining about PNG Power. I can say that we have no quick answers and no quick solutions to this important national asset of ours. Uh, I'll try to answer some of those questions, starting with the last question. In relation to the kind of contracts that PNG Power has, usually under the law, every year, PNG Power submits to Cabinet what is known as an annual operating plan, and that usually contains schedule of contracts that are entered into by PNG Power, and of course the financial situation. And of course, I will now seek Cabinet's approval, following process, then in due course present a statement to this Parliament about this very important national-owned company. Mr. Acting Speaker, PNG Power is definitely not on sale now. We are not going to sell this important company through a fire sale, which will result in us getting no value for an important national asset. We have the power and the mechanisms and the controls to work together to turn this company around, which has been allowed over many, many years, not the last four or five years, or not since this government took office in 2019, for this company to be in the state where it is now. Over the many, many years, we've allowed this company to go down this path where we're not really proud of a company like that. Uh, Mr. Speaker, yes, PNG Power owes various creditors substantial amounts of money. Two of them have actually taken PNG Power to court. And I can announce to this parliament that we've reached agreement with those companies who are actually owned by our own people. They recognize that their own national owned company is in trouble and they've allowed and they've agreed to allow PNG Power time to trade its way out of these difficulties. It is not a company that can be easily sold over at fire sales just to get out of a mess like that, the one it's in now. So they've allowed PNG Power to trade its way and PNG Power has been making payments, Mr. Acting Speaker. So my short answer is that in the immediate term and even in the near future, PNG Power will not be sold, not at fire sale prices, where our people will not get a decent return on this company and its assets. Going back to the case of East uh, Sipic and particularly our town of Wewek, it is uh, known as a sea center uh, where PNG Power does not make any profit. And that is not the only town. There are many others who are regarded as sea centers, which PNG Power continues to try its best to ensure that there's at least some power, even though there is no return on PNG Power's investment. And for those of us who may be thinking that the way out is for PNG Power to transfer ownership of those centers to them, I can tell this parliament that the provisional government will come running back to this government for funding because most of them are not making money. And PNG Power has been providing service because of community service obligations. And we have had difficulty with reliability of power, mainly from Puma, who continues to bully us using its dominant position in this country. And it is something that we're all working together to make sure that we have secure and reliable power supplies. It's an ongoing work in progress. I admit that there are problems. I will never deny it, but these sort of things take time to actually to resolve and to manage. And um, in relation to the issue of about 30% of the power being stolen, yes, there have been some instances where our own employees of PNG Power have colluded with outsiders to steal power. And on many occasions when they are, have been discovered and found, 
they have been terminated on the spot. Uh, it is a heavily unionized company compared to the others. The presence of union, most of the members, there are about 700 members, employees of PNG Power, who you, you wouldn't believe it are members of the union. So you may have read uh, recently that PNG Power had to go to court to obtain a restraining order to prevent the union from calling a strike. And the National Court has granted that order. We are using that as, as, a, as an opportunity to stabilize the operations of the company. And as I said earlier in this parliament, by December this year, we should have some results where we all can be proud of. It is not a company where we've ignored. We've invested a lot of time. We have workshoped the many issues. There's a lot of literature on this company telling us what to do with it. We know what can be done. And very soon, uh, with the approval of the Prime Minister, there is a rescue package that has been uh, proposed to Cabinet. Cabinet should be able to, to approve it. We will then see good things being turned around. So I must thank the good governor for asking this very important question. I'm not sure if I'm answering all of them, but in general, my answer to his question is yes, it is a problem company, but we are not sitting back and allowing it to go down further. We are doing everything we can to rescue it and turn it around. And the areas where the sea centers where we are having issues, we have now asked the Australians to help us by paying for the cost of uh, solar power. And in the case of Daru, recently PNG, STP and PNG Power came to an uh, arrangement where our people of Daru can then be able to enjoy uh, reliable power through solar power. We are also looking at uh, supplying power to work through installation of a solar system. The challenge now for us is to identify suitable state-owned land which we can then use to install the much needed solar power. The solar system, or the solar power will then be able to complement the energy that has been provided by the diesel uh, generators. And also, lastly, Mr. Speaker, yes, we had an or PNG Power had an arrangement where there was a company, I should not mention its name, but it was a company which had a dominant mm -hmm. position in providing diesel powered gensets to PNG Power. We have recognized that there was overcharging, there was collusion between the employees and that company and we have slowly faced them away. And as soon as we have enough money, we will then be able to buy our own gen gen generators. Mr. Speaker, I can assure the good government, governor and the people of PNG that this government is doing everything to make sure this company comes back to us. Thank you, Mr. Acting Speaker.